David here with Fig Mood on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a pen from a company I haven't featured for a while on my channel, and that would be the Edison Pen Company. Uh, there's no real reason for the lapse. They make some great pens. Um, I actually have a couple in my personal collection I've yet to review, so who knows, you might see more of them later on. But in the meantime, I have something I feel is very cool and unique to share with you, and that is the brand new Edison Pen Company Collier Grande, fitted with a number eight Magna Carta nib. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Collier Grande, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Brian Gray and the crew at Edison for providing this pen on a, a pseudo loan for review. More information about that later. The Edison Pen Company is a manufacturer based out of Milan, Ohio, which is the boyhood home of Thomas Edison and served as the inspiration behind the name of the company. Uh, the pen arrives in this box. Uh, along with it is a few things. There was a branded notepad, which they make in-house. They're not making the paper in-house, just the uh, constructing the notepads. Um, there is a nice Edison magnet that I'll put up on my desk behind me. Um, if you ever have any uh, pictures or artwork or magnets that you care to send along and uh, possibly see up there behind me, feel free to, free to write me a letter at my uh, P.O. Box address. Uh, it is in the notes below. And as I said many times before, if you take the time to write, then I promise to write back. Um, it's always nice to hear from folks. Um, there is also this Edison bookmark. I find these uh, to make great Christmas ornaments. I've always thought uh, their nib slash light bulb logo was kind of neat. Um, there was a sticker as well as a bookmark. And then there is a couple of things from Brian. Uh, now, these are the things that Brian send out with all of the orders, uh, but there was a copy of some of our communication. Um, I get the feeling like this is just documentation of what I requested. You know, a customer can't really come back and say this wasn't what they ordered when your own words are right here. Uh, and then there's also a letter from Brian. Uh, it's a nice personal touch. Um, on it, it actually says here that you may notice condensation inside the cap or barrel. This is only from flushing the pen after adjusting your nib and causes no harm. Now, uh, from a business perspective, I feel this serves two purposes. One, it prevents questions from customers who wonder why there might be a bit of moisture in their pen. Uh, when purchasing a pen, you typically don't receive it that way. Uh, and also it lets them know that uh, it was intentional. But what it really tells me as a fairly experienced user is that someone physically tested this nib and not just a cursory test, enough of a test where they partially inked it up to make sure that it performed to their high standards. Um, the message that gives to me is that Edison really cares about the quality of their products. And what does this product look like? It looks like this. Uh, it's in a nice presentation box. Uh, when I opened this up for the very first time, uh, I, I was like, wow, that is just a sharp looking pen. It was a great first impression. Uh, this is the Edison Pen Company Collier Grande. The standard size Collier was one of the very first designs for Edison. Uh, it was actually a custom commission for a customer who was asking for a specific shape. And after the commission was finished, Brian liked the design so much that with the customer's permission, it was added to Edison's permanent lineup. Uh, Brian asked the customer to name the pen and they came back with the name Collier. It was so long ago that Brian really can't recall if there was a significance to the name, but the Collier name stuck. Now, this is the Collier Grande, which, as the name would imply, larger than the standard Collier. This is what it looks like compared to the standard Collier model. It essentially has the same proportions, but it's just larger. And there's another big difference I'll get to here in a bit. This particular model is made from Jonathan Brooks' Primary Manipulation 4 material, or PM4 as it's known. Uh, PM4 differentiates itself from the other PM iterations by being more opaque. Uh, there is a lot more pearlescence, uh, as well as the colors being a bit more blended and less sharp. Uh, here you can see a comparison between the PM4 and the original PM material. Uh, there's a significant difference between the two, and I love them both. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is slightly rounded. Then below that we have the clip. 
Uh, it has a very low profile with a rounded end. Uh, I find it fits well in materials of varying thicknesses. The cap angles up until about this point and then it tapers down ever so slightly. Uh, there is a medium sized step down from the cap to the barrel, which again angles up very slightly before tapering down to the end, which has more of a rounded point. I like that the cap and the end of the barrel have different shapes. Uh, while there are many pens which look great when the ends match, it's nice to have something with uh, a bit of a different design to it. Um, also, the curves of this pen are extremely subtle. At first glance, you might think everything is straight, but there is some variation in width, even if it's literally less than a millimeter. Uh, on the barrel, it is engraved with Edison Pen Company and Collier Grande. Um, you know, I like the placing of the engraving on the barrel when you are gripping the pen. If you're right-handed while you're using the pen, the engraving is facing you. Um, however, with the cap on, it uh, well, there are a number of orientations, but on one of the orientations, it's just slightly out of line with the clip. I just wish it was a little bit more in line there on one of the orientations. The cap twists off with two full rotations, and underneath is what I feel is a real highlight of this pen, a stainless steel number eight Magna Carta nib. Uh, these nibs are available in fine, medium, and broad. They're also available in either standard steel like this one or gold-plated steel. And here's a look at the ebonite feed. Uh, the housing for these nibs are ebonite as well. Uh, you might wonder where the number of the nib comes from. You hear folks talk about a number four, a number five, a number six, or in this case, a number eight. And that number is the diameter of the feed in millimeters. Uh, these nibs are coming from the same company which manufactures Magna Carta pens. Uh, they are based out of India. And to be honest, I haven't had the greatest experience with Indian made nibs, but this nib is significantly different. Uh, it is fantastic. To begin with, Brian Gray takes great pride in producing a high quality product and the fact that he feels strongly enough about the quality of these nibs to put them on Edison pens tells me a lot. Uh, and you'll see in the writing sample, but this nib is outstanding. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Brian and his team put their hands on every single nib, so the chance of something arriving to you that doesn't perform well is very minimal. Um, in regard to the section, it isn't overly long, and it is concave. There is a medium-sized step up to the threads, and then another step up to the remainder of the barrel. I like the size of this section. I feel the transitions here do a good job getting the section down to a manageable thickness. Um, it would have been very easy to have this section be way too thick, and, and this is a thick and chunky pen overall. Um, with the section not being overly long, I do find my grip spills a bit onto the threads, but I don't find the resin threads to be sharp or uncomfortable. Uh, this is a large pen, but it's not unwieldy. The cap does not post by design, and I'm fine with that. Um, I like the shape of the back of this barrel, and in order to have this cap post, you would have either had to have a more dramatic taper here or an oversized cap, neither of which I feel really would have worked for this design. Uh, this is one of those pens that just looks really good in the hand. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen, except standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, you could potentially eyedropper this pen if you so choose, uh, or at an additional cost, you could order this pen with Edison's draw filling system, which incorporates a, uh, a blind cap and a little push piston filling system. I'll show you an example of what that looks like during the size comparisons. Um, for me, with this specific material, um, I don't feel that the draw filler would be a good choice. Uh, in my opinion, it's a filling system better suited for a uh, more translucent or transparent resin, so you can get a good look at how the pen is filling up. The Edison Collier Grande is only available on the Edison website. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. It sells for $325, and I feel it is well worth that price. Uh, on their site, you can get a look at what they currently have in inventory, but this pen is also part of their signature line where you can have it made from a wide variety of materials of your choice. Uh, the turnaround time for Edison is typically anywhere from 8 to 16 weeks. I believe right now it's around 12 weeks. But I feel for this pen, it is well worth the wait. I, I just love this pen. Uh, 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Edison had sent this pen to me on loan, and Brian let me know that if I cared for it, I could purchase it if I should cho choose. And the moment I opened the box, I took one look at the pen, and I knew I was buying a pen and that Brian was not getting this back. So I emailed him and told me to please send me an invoice because he wasn't going to be seeing this pen again. Now, when I review a pen, it tends to live on my desk for a couple of weeks, and then after the review, it gets cleaned out and put away. Uh, but I have a feeling that this pen will be staying on my desk for a while. I, I find myself continually reaching for it. Um, the only problem is that uh, with the thickness of this pen, it won't fit into one of my Dudek cubes that I keep on my desk. Uh, but that's a real first world pen problem. Uh, it does fit in my Good Made Better pen well, so uh, it fits nicely in there. So that's where this has been living lately. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample with this very cool number eight nib. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Edison Collier Grande. Um, in regard to a couple of other Edison pens, uh, this is what it looks like with the Edison Herald. Uh, and then this is the Glenmont. And I had mentioned before the draw filler, and I have the Menlo here that has a draw filler. And the draw filler... You take this off and then you use this plunger in order to fill the pen. And it, like I had mentioned before, kind of works better with a pen that uh, has some translucency or transparency to it. But that's what it looks like in comparison to the Collier Grande. In regard to some non-Edison pens, here it is with a Lamy All-Star. And here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. And then finally, um, I had my project, which was the Franklin Christoph Model 66 in the California Sunset. This is what it looks like. Um, as of the recording of this, uh, that we had a successful launch of this project, everything went really well. There is just a couple of units left. We're literally talking under five units that are available on my website. So um, that if you are watching this and interested, then there might just be a unit or two available to purchase on the website, or they might be sold out by the time I post this. But either way, uh, if you uh, missed out on getting one of those and wanted to take a look at it, then uh, check out figboot.com and there might just be a unit or two available there for you. In regard to uncap comparisons, here it is with the Lamy All-Star and the Visconti Homo Sapiens. And then finally, here it is with the Edison Herald. And you can see how this number eight nib is significantly larger than the nibs on these other pens. Here we go with the writing sample for the Edison Collier Grande. And this is a number eight, and this is a medium stainless steel nib. In regard to ink, I felt that a nib made in India should also have an ink made in India. And that would be from Krishna. And it is their peacock. I felt that that was appropriate for this as well, because uh, this material is very peacock esque This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice solid saturated blue. Uh, this is it in comparison to the Leonardo blue and then even fountain pen revolution royal flush blue This is what the bottle looks like um, I think it's a unique bottle and then it's even in the shape of a uh, peacock feather as well, which is kind of cool And here we go with the rest of the writing sample Uh, this number eight nib is really, really pleasant. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation out of here. 
Uh, not tons. This is not a flex nib. Um, but I do find it to be fairly smooth with just a, a, a bit of nice feedback. It's not, it doesn't have a, a you know, it doesn't feel um, like, a, like you're writing with a pencil or something like that or an unsharpened pencil. It's just really, really pleasant. Um, the ink flow is really nice on it in regard to some reverse writing. It is a little sharp, but it gets the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Edison Collier Grande with the uh, number eight Magna Carta nib. Uh, I'm a big fan of this pen. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Edison Pen Company. They do really good work. If you uh, haven't checked out either this pen or the Edison Pen Company, I would uh, highly recommend checking out the link in the notes below to, uh, to uh, check out some of their offerings. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.